as we put on another lesson for Coach Powell's Sunday School class. Listen to the words that Reverend Tony Evans has shared with us. And let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, once again, we just thank you so much for your love, kindness, grace, and mercy, and all that you do for us each and every day of our lives. And as we go into this lesson, Father, once again, we seek your your blessings since you open my, our hearts and our minds that we might understand the lesson of life that you have for us contained therein. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This lesson was given to us by Reverend Tony Evans and the uh, point of the lesson, integrity and contentment in Christ form the foundation for good relationships. And this is lesson number six. The theme for the lesson itself, honor all relationships. Honor all relationships. The Bible meets life. We say the implosion of a structure can be an amazing thing to watch. One minute you're looking at a fully standing building, bridge, or tunnel. And then within seconds, the entire structure collapses into a pile of ashes and debris. Experts place a number of small explosions strategically throughout the structure. Strategic placement is pivotal to destroying of the structure without destroying what's around it. The structural integrity of our lives and relationship matters just as much as it does for a building. It takes only a second for a relationship to implode. One lie can collapse a friendship. One slanderous accusation can destroy people's perception of us. One wrong choice carried out to its fullest can cause a decade of growth to crumble. The Ten Commandments provide a solid foundation built on honor and contentment to ensure the structural integrity of our relationship. Exodus 20, 15, and 16. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. A preacher got on the bus one day, gave the bus driver money for the fare, and the dri driver gave him back some change. As the preacher sat down, he counted the coins and discovered the bus driver gave him too much change. Returning to the front of the bus, he handed the driver two quarters and remarked, You gave me too much change. The bus driver smiled and said, Pastor, I really appreciate this because I was in your church service yesterday and I heard your sermon on honesty. I intentionally gave you too much change to see whether you live by what you preach." Integrity ought to be our automatic for us. We never know who is watching our actions or listening to our words. Conducting ourselves honorably and with integrity is at the heart of two of the Ten Commandments. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. We are to treat others with respect, and that includes respect for their possessions. Our words should also show respect for the other person. These virtues are manifested in love and define a kingdom disciple. Jesus summed it up when he said, By this everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. Loving one another includes speaking the truth in love at all times. Many people excuse a lie because it's only a little white lie. A little lie is like being a little pregnant. It always shows up after a while. Lies have a way of creating a boomerang effect and coming right back at us to cause a lot of damage. Lies always have a way of coming back around. For that reason alone, we ought not to lie. Our lives should be a mirror of the one 
who made us. When we operate outside of the virtue of the kingdom, we are not reflecting the truth of who God is. Instead, we are showcasing the deception of Satan, the father of lies, whose goal is to thwart the rule of God on earth. When we choose to lie or misrepresent the truth, we are putting Satan's nature on display instead of God's. Living a life of integrity means modeling our thoughts, words, and actions after God. As we do this, we are able to advance his kingdom agenda on earth while bringing glory to him and good to others. The next scripture reading is Exodus 20:17. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male or female servant, the ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Aesop's fables include the story of a dog crossing a bridge with a bone in his mouth. As he looked into the water, he saw a reflection of what he thought was even a larger dog, which would seem like an even larger bone. Wanting the bigger bone, the dog immediately opened his mouth to go after it. Yet, in the process, the bone in his mouth dropped into the water and quickly sank to the bottom out of reach. Not only did the dog fail to get the illusion of the larger bone, but he lost the one he had been enjoying. Not being satisfied with what you already have is the quickest path toward losing it. Advertisers are well aware of our propensity toward covetousness. They spend an inordinate amount of time and money attempting to make us dissatisfied. They know if we become discontent enough with our current state, we will succumb to their sales pitch. Due to our chronic covetousness, many of us have adopted the motto, I shop. Therefore, I am. We're not happy unless we're constantly obtaining more. Contentment doesn't rest on these things. Contentment is realizing that God has met your needs and coupling that realization with gratitude. Contentment is being just as happy driving an old jalopy as you think you'd be driving a brand new Mercedes. In both cases, you have transportation to contentment is taking as much pleasure living in an 800 square foot apartment as in a 4,000 square foot house. In both cases, you have a roof over your head. Three, contentment is enjoying a hot dog as much as a T-bone steak. In both cases, you are not starving. Four, contentment is being just as satisfied wearing clothes from a thrift store as you would be decked out in a fancy outfit. In both cases, you have clothes on your back. When we live in a contented mindset, we are acknowledging the goodness of God in His provisions. We allow gratitude to replace a spirit of want. Circumstances or stuff should never drive our contentment. The secret to contentment comes through knowing that all we have and all we can do comes through Christ who strengthens us and provides for us. Contentment is the key to living a life of integrity because it provides the security necessary to rest in the reality of the moment. When you know that all you have comes from the one who loves you most, you can let go of any scheming, manipulating, lying, slandering, and maneuvering to get ahead. You can rest in the truth that God's sovereign provincial hand will provide all you need. In order to experience life to the fullest, find contentment in what God provides and you will find the secret to satisfying life. 
The next scripture, Psalms 37, 1 through 6, and it reads, Do not fret because of those who are evil or be envious of those who do wrong. For like the grass, they will soon wither like green plants. They will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pastures. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your ways to the Lord. Trust in him, and he will do this. He will make your righteous reward shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. These words from King David captured the heart of the commandment not to covet. He began by reminding us not to envy those who do wrong. It's easy to envy those who have no regard for God yet seem to flourish. As another psalmist wrote, My feet have almost slipped. I had nearly lost my foothold, for I envied the arrogant when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. The antidote for such envy and dissatisfaction comes from looking to God instead of gawking at the wicked. We are to trust and to take delight in Him and Him alone. All we could ever desire rests in God. I'll admit I struggled with contentment in the early days of my ministry I wanted the ministry to grow and expand. I wondered at times how much of the growth rested solely on my shoulders. That may all sound noble, but my attitude caused me to work long hours when I may not have needed to do so. My focus was on my own efforts. One key piece of advice changed all of this for me. I received this advice from a former seminary classmate of mine who had gone out to a great impact ministry of his own. He said, Tony, never forget this truth. You only have one source. God is your source. Everything else is just a resource. That truth enabled me to rest. None of us needs to worry or fret about what other people are accomplishing or doing. It's a normal inclination to make comparisons, but that doesn't mean it's healthy. We can let go of competition and embrace our completion in Christ. When you do, you will receive the desires of your heart. You will receive what God has for you. And he never runs out of his provisions. He always has enough. Give Christ your heart by giving him your allegiance. Then watch him. Bring your delight as he delights in you. As we live out this lesson, we want to think about it in these long lines. How will you actively seek to live a life of integrity? Choose one of the following applications. A. Check your words. Be mindful of your words and actions this week. If you are tempted to say or do anything that is not honest and truthful, stop yourself. Commit to being a person of integrity. B. Memorize. Commit to memory. 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. Let this verse continually remind you that you already have all that you need. And see, encourage. We could all use some positive affirmations in the area of integrity and contentment. These things we view on media can cause us to become dissatisfied with our lives. Choose to be a source of encouragement to those who struggle with discontentment. Consider the impact living a life of integrity and contentment will have on you and those around you. 
Ask God to strengthen and empower you to be a person who keeps the heartbeat of the Ten Commandments through a life of love. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, once again, we just thank you so much for being with us. We thank you for the blessings of the knowledge that we shared with the Ten Commandments as we've gone through six lessons and as it explains the, the, the Ten Commandments. We just praise you for that. And as a Sunday school class, Father, we thank you for letting us be together. And we just ask that you bless us until once again we can meet together as a group. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.